Welcome into Sports Memo's Betting Podcast Saturday College Basketball Edition with Brent Crow. Brent, welcome to the pod. How are you? Hey, dude. Hey, Drew. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing good, Brent. Uh, what a monster college basketball card on Saturday. In my opinion, kind of the best time as a sports better to find an advantage here. Over 200 basketball teams playing, over 100 games to put a to put a line out. It's a uh, good day to be a sports better, in my opinion. Uh, how are you feeling about the Saturday card? I like it, and hopefully I can continue. I've had some good luck on Saturdays recently, and really just – I've uh, been, been on a nice little run. I think I'm 19 and 10 in my last 29, five out of six in college basketball over this week. Had a big 20-star uh, winner on Monday night with uh, Florida State plus the points against Duke and continued it uh, Thursday night. UTEP under, didn't play anything Friday, looking for a big card on Saturday. Absolutely, man. And uh, appreciate everybody out there with the shout-outs on uh, last Friday's podcast about the Saturday card. We appreciate uh, all the nice words. So. Excuse me, Brent. We got the top of the card here. Noon Eastern start. Oklahoma at Kansas. That's the third ranked Kansas Jayhawks on ESPN. Looks like 136 and a half being the total minus 11 and a hook. That's uh, the Jayhawks laying at home, Brent. Well, Kansas keeps winning. I mean, you know, they've been impressive, but it's been their defense. They've taken over as the number one defensive team in the nation in Ken Palm's ratings ahead of Virginia, ahead of Baylor. Ahead of West Virginia, Kansas, the number one defense. They give up just 49 points on the road in their last game against West Virginia, 46 against TCU before that. And, you know, this total is based on Oklahoma's early season scoring of 136 and a half. Because if you're looking at Kansas, you don't put up a 136 and a half. It doesn't matter who they play. Uh, Oklahoma, uh, in recent uh, days, they've, they've also struggled to score. I mean, they had the game against Iowa State in their last game. They put up 90 Iowa State without Halliburton, didn't have a clue. And I'll be looking to play against Iowa State from now on. But, you know, Oklahoma uh, has not been a high-scoring team in conference play. Uh, they're not especially fast. They're only fifth in, t- in pace, fourth in offense, fifth in defense. I mean, just a, a middle-of-the-road team. So I don't see any reason for this total to be this high. I'll bet it under. It opened 135. It's up to 136 and a half. There's a 137 in Las Vegas, and I'll definitely be playing this one under the total. All right, first game down there in the Big 12. We got SEC action up next. This is the four o'clock Eastern, one o'clock Pacific tip on ESPN two. We got LSU versus Alabama, gridiron special. But uh, on the hardwood here, Brent, we got 167 and a half being the total high total here. SEC matchup minus two. That's Alabama laying in Tuscaloosa, Brent. You know, we've talked about LSU, seems like every week, about how poor they are defensively. I mean, you know, two weeks ago they'd give up 99, 99. <laughs> to Vanderbilt. Yeah. And heck, even in their last game, they give up 78 to Missouri, which is another anemic offensive team. Uh, I mean, they're, they're last in the conference in three-point shooting defense. They're 12th in the conference overall. And they have the number one offense. They like to get it up and down the court. Alabama, of course, the fastest team in the SEC. Uh, you know, defensively, they're okay. They're offensively, they're pretty good. But, uh, again, they like to get it up and down the court. Fastest team in the SEC, middle of the road on offense and defense. And you're going to see a high-scoring game here. Last time out, it was 90-76. to 76. LSU got the win on their home court. Alabama. You know, they're coming off back-to-back overtime games. They had the win last Saturday against Georgia in overtime, then Wednesday, overtime loss at Auburn. Both of those games, very high scoring, 105-102 and 95-91. So you're going to get another one of those games. I mean, LSU will will gladly get it up and down the court against Alabama. Uh, There were 76 possessions in the last game, but they opened this total at 170. Uh, It has been bet down, as you mentioned, 167, 167 and a half with Alabama, the two and a half point favorite. And, you know, everything has to go right when you're talking about a a conference game over a a total like this. You think you look at the matchup and LSU loves to score and Alabama loves to score and they play fast. But there's a reason that it's been bet under so far. The total just absolutely, uh, I mean, it's a very high total. You're talking at 170, that's 85, 85. And if you look at games in conference i mean lsu and alabama even though as fast as they are it's hard to find one that goes over 170 in regulation so 
I agree with the move here. And, you know, I don't want to keep – if it keeps going down, I'm not going to bet it. But at 167.5, 168, I think there's one out there that, uh, you know, I think definitely a lean to the under. Yeah, Brent, I, I mean, I know you've been doing this a long time in terms of college basketball. and college basketball totals betting um, – it, you know, what's the term out there, Brent? It, it, when you get this high near 170s, it's like, and you want to bet the over, it, you, you need a clean ride, right? Exactly. I mean, you can't have a three minute scoreless stretch. You have to, you know, you can't have one team go, you know, three for 20 from three point land. I mean, it takes really, you know, two solid offensive performances to get one over this number. And if you, you know, it doesn't matter. How, I mean, I know both teams. Uh, are, are good offensively they get up and down the court and all that but still i mean like i said you look at, at what the, even the last game 76 possessions it was 90 to 76 that's 166 points uh, so you know it's uh it does take the perfect storm to get one over a total this high and then if you have a close game at the end you know it, it doesn't matter how fast they play for the first 35 minutes the last five minutes can slow to a crawl Right, exactly. And he's Brent Crow. Um, check him out at sportsmemo.com. He's got some uh, bets up there for the Saturday action. Also, we'll get a best bet from him here on the podcast and answer a bunch of questions here on Twitter. We appreciate everybody reaching out on Twitter. We got uh, ACC matchup up next here, Brent. Looks like 6 o'clock Eastern tip. This one on ESPN. We're talking Virginia at North Carolina. Looks like UNC minus two in Chapel Hill, 118 and a half being the total here. Virginia obviously going to look to slow it. Um, and, and we're seeing a total under 120. And Brent Crow, I remember you saying last year, whenever Virginia got, what, 120 or over, it was just almost like, what, an, an automatic under bet for you. This year, is it kind of the same case with Virginia? And, and how, do you, how do you view this total sitting at, what, about 118 as we're talking late on Friday night? Well, it, the problem this year is that Virginia's been so bad offensively, there hadn't been any 120s. I think the last one was uh, was the Notre Dame. What, what did it close the other day? It was up there, and of course, you know, it was 50 to 49 with an extra five minutes. Uh, <laughs> Three to two in overtime. Yeah. So, you know, they did play a high scoring game against Louisville the time last Saturday, 80 to 73, but still just 59 possessions. And, and I mean, I think the Wake Forest game was the last one that the total was in this range. I bet it under. It went over in overtime, 65 63. But I mean, this Virginia team, they're still really solid defensively, number three in the country, but they're anemic offensively. I mean, terrible. They're 335 in the nation in three-point shooting. They're dead last in the ACC in offense, three-point shooting, two-point shooting. I mean, it's just not a good offensive team. They're down to playing about six players now. Uh, one of the guys, uh, um, Casey Morsel, was a starter early in the season. He barely gets off the bench. You want to know why, Drew? It's because he's why? shooting 15% from three. <laughs> he's their two guard. He's, he's 11 for 74 from three. I mean, you know, Jeez. you look at this team, uh, and there's the best three-point shooter is 36%. And, you know, they've got some guys that, that that were volume shooters that are 21%, 15%, 21%. I mean, uh, you know, it's been uh, – if it wasn't for the kid, uh, Walden, Wald Tensei, whatever his – however you pronounce his name – uh, he's been on fire lately, and it, I mean, if it weren't for him, they have no offense whatsoever. And you know, I think that uh, unfortunately, you know, everybody realized it. So you've only had very few totals that get this high for Virginia. I mean, a lot of them have been in the 112, 110 range, and you know, it's just when you bet under 110 or so, I mean, it's it's a scary proposition, and the game can be slow. And and it, most all Virginia games are slow, but you know you can still get over that total with just a few fouls at the end or whatever. So, you know, I really don't like to play anything under about 117 or so, no matter what the matchup is. But you know this one this one actually opened 113 and it's been bet up to 119. I see now and some 117 and a half 118. It's all over the board. But yeah, again, people look. I guess they're looking at North Carolina with uh, Cole Anthony back and you know they did they played a good game against Duke blew it of course at the end I mean just completely fell apart then their last game they only scored 57 against Wake Forest and it doesn't matter if Cole Anthony plays or not plays this is not a good 
North Carolina offense. You know, I told you the numbers for Virginia. Well, North Carolina's pretty much uh, – actually, I thought there's actually more than 14 teams. Virginia's or North Carolina's worst three-point shooting, shooting team than Virginia is. And, I mean, you know, this is just not your typical North Carolina team. And if you look at the first matchup – it was 56-47 Virginia. That's 103 points. I mean, you may get a couple extra possessions in this one than a normal Virginia game because North Carolina does like to get up and down the court. But North Carolina takes the worst shots of anybody in the country. There's no Luke May or you know anybody that can that consistently scores for this team inside, outside, whatever. I mean, if they don't get the layups, they do, they basically don't score. And you know what you don't get against Virginia? Layups. So I hope they keep betting this one over. I'm going to bet it under. All right, looking towards the under at the uh, highest watermark here before tip. We got a 7.30 Eastern tip up next, and then we'll get a nightcap in, Brent, and then talk a best bet and answer some questions here. We got DePaul at Creighton, rotation number 759-760. This game is on Fox Sports 1, so a watch and win opportunity. We got 147 being the total here, Brent, minus 9, pretty much across the board here. We're talking late on Friday night, actually on the East Coast. It might already be Saturday, so maybe day of game here. But minus 9, Creighton, 147 the total here, Brent. Well, I bet this game over the total back on Wednesday, the uh, January the 22nd, when these two teams played, it was 83-68. Total about the same range. And, yeah, you know, DePaul didn't score much in the second half in that game. The first half was up and down the court, uh, both teams scoring. And... I think uh, in the say it was 37-34 in the first half, and then Creighton poured it on in the second half. But I see the same thing here, especially when you when you when you're talking about Creighton on their home court instead of on the road. They're going to play even faster, shoot even better. Uh, you know they've had games against Marquette. They scored 92 at home against the Providence, which is a low scoring team. They scored 78, 77 against Xavier, 94 against St. John's. I think you're going to see a, a really solid output from Creighton here. And, and DePaul's going to score enough to, to go over the total here. DePaul's actually playing pretty fast uh, this season. They're third in the conference in pace. Unfortunately, they're not hitting many shots. They're 10th in offense uh, in the Big East. But you know they will get it up and down the court. And, of course, Creighton is going to as well. So I think you're going to see a lot of transition game here. You just hope that DePaul hits a few shots. But at 146, I think you've got a little margin of error here. And uh, I think you'll see this one go over the total. He's Brent Crow, 5-1, and one, his last six college basketball games. So coming in good of late, 18-9, and nine, last 30 days as well. Sportsmemo.com, check them out. We got the nightcap here, Brent. This one in the Pac-12, 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Pacific on ESPN2, Pac-12 action, Washington at UCLA. We're seeing the Bruins pretty much minus three right now, 136 being the total in the nightcap, Brent. What has happened to this Washington team? I mean, you know, quite a green. Injury. Yeah. Yeah. You know, goes uh, on, the, on the shelf with academics, but. Oh, yeah, uh, that's yeah, it. I didn't realize he was that, you know, that good. I mean, obviously last year at Kentucky, we had a, a terrible year transferred. Uh, he's, you know, I mean, I guess he, he did play pretty well for the Huskies. He shot 44% from three and, uh, you know, as the point guard kept them, I think, uh, you know, as far as kept them in the game, in their game plan and whatever, ran the, ran the show, ran the court, but they have completely collapsed without him. They're now 2-10 and 10 in the Pac-12. I mean, you know, this was a team at one point was was 10-2 and two with two losses to Tennessee and Gonzaga. This is the only team this year that has beaten Baylor. I mean, that's just remarkable. that They, they had a 72-40 to 40 win over USC back in early January, but you know, like I said, they have fallen on tough times. Only 56 points in their last game against USC on the road. That was their their seventh straight loss. And I think, you know, this UCLA team, nobody's done more with less talent in this conference than Mick Cronin because they just don't have a lot of of, uh, of talent here. And yet, they're seven and five in in Big 12 play or Pac 12 play. And I mean, I think, uh, you know, they're playing a lot of youngsters. And I think Cronin's done an excellent job. And you look at this matchup, again, you've got a total at 136 with UCLA. You know they, they Cronin, 
this is not a great defensive team, but he makes them play defense. And uh, against Washington in the first game, they had the win on the road, 66-64. In that game, I don't know if you remember or not, Jake Kyman, freshman, hit seven threes. He had made like four in the season before the, you know, the whole season. He hit seven against Washington, and he's only got 20 total for the year. So they had that unbelievable game from Kyman against the Washington zone and were able to get a win up there uh, on the road. But, you know, on their home court, I think uh, you know, they've played a little better defense than they have away from home. But, you know, with Washington struggling again, I think, again, you're looking at a low-scoring game here. And I think there's a little margin for error with the total at 136. All right, Brent, that does it for the uh, five games there that, that we uh, put out for the podcast. But we do have some questions on Twitter, also a best bet here. And guys did want to throw out this weekend, and you can get Brent Crow or Drew Martin's rest of college basketball season using the coupon code CBB half at checkout for either one, Brent or myself, Drew Martin's rest of college basketball season. For half, and uh, you can use it for both of them if you want as well. So use it for a uh, two for one if you'd like. Sportsmemo.com. We also got the promo code VDay14. Check that out. Sportsmemo.com. It makes uh, all the plays just fourteen dollars this weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Here, VDay14 at checkout for any single plays for only fourteen dollars. We got five and one last six for Brent Crow. Eighteen and nine last thirty days. Brent, we have some questions here on Twitter. Was going to read them off to you, but do you want to throw out a uh, best bet for the podcast on Saturday's card here? Sure. Uh, we're going to look at a game that we did not talk about, uh, Drew, and stick in the SEC. We'll take Auburn and Missouri to go under the total. It's 137 at the moment. Auburn coming off the overtime win against Alabama and actually – Played pretty well, way better than I expected this year from Auburn. They're nine and two in conference play and twenty-two and two overall. Uh, but they've had a little trouble at times going on the road. This team has played, believe it or not, five overtimes in their last five games. I mean, That's I don't crazy. think I've ever, I've ever seen a team play this many overtimes. Four of the last five games going to overtime, one of them double overtime, and I think it skews the numbers a little bit. Uh, Missouri, a team that really struggles to score at times. Uh, and I think they catch Auburn in a, in a in a spot where they may not be at their best. And, you know, I've seen Auburn play uh, a lot this year. They had some struggles at times. You know, their two losses, they couldn't score. It was against uh, Alabama and Florida. Both of those games were on the road. Even in their road win against uh, Ole Miss and Arkansas, their last two road games, they had trouble scoring, had some droughts. They were able to rally mostly behind their defense. Uh, and get victories in those games. Missouri's a solid defensive team. And, again, this number's a little bit high for a Missouri game, even though they're playing Auburn. Uh, we'll take it under the total. All right, Tigers, under the total here. Auburn versus Missouri. And what, what's the best number you can find there, Brent? I see a 37 and a half. 137 and a half for the best bet. Auburn versus Missouri in Saturday's action under 137 and a half. So we got uh, Twitter questions here, Brent. First right. up, we got uh, Mr. Welch. Thoughts? Question mark. VCU versus Richmond. Side and total. That's the game he's wanting us to break down. Obviously, Richmond this year, Brent, has been very, very good. Um, their offense, you know, they've had a couple injuries and they've still been really rolling offensively. So I think Richmond looking towards them over the total is something that I have here. Um, not sure if you got anything here on VCU versus Richmond tomorrow's card. Yeah, I looked at uh, the over as well. I mean, you know, VCU loves to to play fast, to play their pressure defense and whatever. And uh, you know, they are they are a solid defensive team. But if you look at their at their games, I mean, you know, they've they've played some fairly high scoring games. The first matchup in this in uh, this series was six eighty seven sixty eight VCU with a nineteen point win over Richmond. Uh, now they flip flop play Richmond on their on the road, and you, with VCU coming up, they've actually lost two of their last three to Rhode Island, as well as a home loss to George Mason in their last game. Uh, and as you mentioned, it's been a surprise surprising year for Richmond. They've had uh, they've been very good uh, offensively. They've shot the ball very well, but they're you know, they play they're not really a fast team, not really a slow team, but they will 
against faster teams get up and down the court. And it seems like when they play good teams, they have a little trouble guarding them. Dayton and VCU both scored 87 uh, against them. Alabama scored 90. Auburn scored 79. So, uh, you know, this is a team usually not great athletically. And as a result, uh, teams get easy buckets against them. So I'd like to go over the total. And as far as the side goes, uh, you know, you've got Richmond as a two-point favorite. I would actually lean a little bit VCU here, especially – with it motivated off the loss to George Mason. Brent, next question up from CJ Smith on Twitter. Just checking the early line, seeing Notre Dame plus 13 seems high against Duke. Notre Dame is third in the conference in scoring and played the top teams in ACC pretty tough. Do you think 13 is a, a little bit rich here for Duke to have to be laying against the Irish? I don't like this Duke team. and I, you know, I don't mean I don't like Duke. Uh, personally, I don't like this team as as a uh, or in regards to how they're they're viewed. I mean, you know, top five team, whatever. But I watch them play and I see holes, and I've seen them at times look absolutely horrible on defense. I mean, you know, this this is not a dominant team where you've got five guys that are going to play in the NBA. And you know, this to me, this team they've got some good players. I think Trey Jones has been absolutely fantastic at times. But uh, overall, I just don't you – know, and that's the state of college basketball, really. I mean, this team still uh, is able to get victories and, and is ranked in the top five. But, you know, like I said, without really appearing as the top five team, they're 21-3. and three. I bet against them in their last game against Florida State, which was a five-point five win. And you know, if you just look at Duke in their last five games, they don't have any wins more than 12 points. They beat uh, Pittsburgh, uh, Syracuse, B.C. They – you know, they should have lost to North Carolina. I thought Florida State had a chance to beat them in their last game. Uh, you know, earlier they had lost to Clemson and Louisville. And, you know, they, I, like I said, uh, at times they, they look clueless defensively. And Notre Dame is a team that, you know, Mike Bray does a great job at, at coaching this team. I don't think they have a tremendous amount of talent, but uh, they, run, they run good stuff. Uh, they're always prepared, and they hang in games. I mean, you look at their last three losses, or actually look at all of their losses uh, in conference play, and they're all less than five points. I mean, that's the biggest, uh, other than the opening uh, game of the season where they played the conference game, you know, to open the season against North Carolina. But other than that, uh, their seven losses, six of them are by five or less. So they've been hit right in, uh, in every game, including a one-point loss at Florida State. Uh, a three-point loss to Louisville. Of course, the overtime loss to Virginia in their last game. So I would definitely lean to Notre Dame here plus the points. All right, like in the Irish plus the 13, so agreeing with you there, C.J. Smith. Uh, last question here from Twitter, Brent. We got Philly fan 310 Thanks for the question here. Any thoughts or disadvantages on taking Ivy League teams that won Friday night? Any dated to back letdown spots on Saturday night games? Adversely, any Friday night losses that play more inspired on Saturday. Thanks. Love the podcast. Thanks for the kind words there, Philly fan. Brent, um, you're not a big Ivy League better, are you? No, I, you know, I just uh, I'll play some Ivy League games in non-conference early, but I don't really get a lot of coverage, obviously. And, and some of these Ivy League teams, you know, I like to do a lot of newspaper reading and so forth. And. I mean, basically, you got the student newspapers. I mean, you're getting no coverage from Penn or Yale in, you know, in major newspapers. And so you, you may get a story a week or really probably not even that much. It's hard to get really good information on Ivy League teams. And I can get, uh, it seems like I have advantages, better advantages with other teams. So I don't play a lot of Ivy League games once conference season starts. Definitely understandable. I mean, it is kind of weird that the Ivy League has gone to this, uh, what, Friday and Saturday night, like back to back. I'm sure that there is situations with the team. Um, I, I'm thinking of one. I was doing a, a show with Ralph Michaels and, and he brought up an Ivy League stat since they started doing this Friday to Saturday back to back in the Ivy League. Uh, the, the team that wins on Friday over the last two years, I believe, is is something like uh one and two. I, I, I'd have to find it. Follow me on Twitter at Drew Martin Betts, and I'll tweet it out. I'm not exactly sure, but there there was a a, a trend that was notable. You know, I, I guess it's not um the, the sample size isn't very high. 
I don't believe since they've been doing this. But uh, yeah, we'll try to get some some good stats for you there on the back to back in the Ivy League because it is an interesting situation that uh, that conference has done there. But Brent. Uh, love the podcast, man, as always. And guys, uh, appreciate anybody chiming in uh, on YouTube in the comments. Uh, also, the the podcast, wherever you're downloading your podcast, feel free to reach out on Twitter at Drew Martin Betts. Brent, you want to throw out your Twitter there? It's at Brent Crow. Okay, or at Brent Crow. Just starting it up there. So uh, uh, reach out to him as well and let us know uh, how you think we can improve. And if you like the podcast, always love hearing that stuff, guys. So, uh, Brent, any uh, closing words here before we shut this down? Just looking forward to uh, Saturday's games. Like you said, big card, and I think it'll be another successful Saturday. I hope so. Huge card on Saturday, guys. Best of luck with your bets. Remember the coupon code CBB half at checkout. Brent Crow or Drew Martin's rest of college basketball season half off. Sportsmemo.com. Good for the next 48 hours. And also, V-Day 14 makes any play at Sportsmemo.com. $14. So check that out, guys. Sportsmemo.com. Have a fun, safe weekend. We'll talk on Monday.